Hello Patriots! So in this video we're going to be talking about scatter plots and best fit lines and uh, correlations and our correlation coefficients and I'm going to tell you how to recognize if a correlation coefficient tells us our best fit line is strong or weak. So the important part, biggest part of this lesson is what we call our scatter plot. Our scatter plot is simply a correction of points that we plot on our x and y axis. Uh, our x axis is going to be our independent axis. X axis is in charge because it is independent. And what I mean by that is the independent or what we call in our statistics class, our explanatory variable will say something. The, the independent variable is going to change. And then my dependent or my response variable will change because of that. Alrighty, so independent will change and then our dependence will change first. And then what we do is we just plot those points. So if we, we, we plot our change of X and we plot the change of Y, plot X, plot Y, plot X, plot Y, plot X, Y, X and Y, X and Y. And these are our two scatter plots. Um, and X will be some variable like minutes or hours or whatever. And then Y can be money. When we are writing our scatter plots, labels are always very important. So sometimes our data will have what we call a correlation. The correlation describes the relationship between the two variables. So as X changes, what does Y do? Well, a positive correlation means one variable increases as, and then the other one will increase as follows. So specifically, X increases, and then because Y, X increases, Y increases. So that's what we always look at. We look at if X increases, what does Y do? And we can notice on our graph, as X goes bigger this way, Y also goes up. We can kind of see that in the general trend of our data. As X goes to the right, Y goes up. We can have a negative correlation. This means X will decrease. I'm sorry, nope, nope, nope. I don't want to say decrease. I always want to say that X increases. X will increase and Y will decrease. X will increase, Y will decrease. As X goes to the right, Y goes down. All right, and you can kind of see that with that trend line or, or best fit line. No correlation means X does not control Y. There is no relationship between our two variables. X will increase, Y does whatever. So my X value will increase, Y does, I don't know, whatever. It just is. There is no direct correlation between the two. X does not control Y. So when we are looking at our data, we want to describe the correlation of the data. So what's really helpful with this sometimes, and we're going to get into what this is called later, is kind of draw a trend, one, one line to draw a trend of the data. And what I notice is the data does this. So X goes to the right, X gets bigger, X gets bigger, Y gets smaller. What happened? And so this would be a negative correlation. Well, I look at this data as X goes to the, as X gets bigger, does Y get bigger? Does Y get smaller? What happens with Y? Well, I can't tell. Y is kind of, dots are all over the place. So this would be no correlation. Because X gets bigger and I, no correlation, spell it correctly. And Y just kind of does, I don't know what Y's doing. On this graph, we notice as X goes to the right, Y goes up. So as X gets bigger, Y also gets bigger, and this would be a positive correlation. Now those lines I was drawing in are called best fit lines or lines of best fit. Uh, we're going to draw them through our scatter point, uh, scatter plot, 
So we want our idealistically, we would have them go right through the middle of our data while getting as many points possible on the line. So you can see this shows a positive correlation on the, the one on the left, the one on the right shows a negative correlation. So to make a good line of best fit, I want it as to go through as many points as possible on that I can and while keeping the other points close. Notice the distance here. What we're trying to do is I'm trying to get these distances as small as possible. Those are all called residuals. I want these distance as small as possible, and I'm going to change that line until they are. Now, in this class, what we're going to do is we're just going to eyeball it. So you can see this is a nice strong correlation because most of the data is very close to the line. The one on the right is a bit of a weaker correlation because the lines are way far from the line. The dots are far from the line. So, and when we measure this correlation, if it is strong or weak, we're going to use values between negative one and positive one. Negative one and positive one are perfect positive correlations and perfect negative correlations. And then the closer we get to zero, the weaker my correlations are. At about 0.8 or 0.7-ish, we get about a moderate, co uh, moderate correlation. We go below half, we're at weak, half or less is weak. And when we get to zero, there is no correlation at all at zero. So when we are looking at our correlation and our slopes, the only thing that correlation and slopes have in common are if it's something is positive or negative. So a positive correlation has a positive slope, but the steepness of the line doesn't have anything to do with the correlation. So I can have a slope of one and a, uh, I'm sorry, a correlation of one and a slope of one half. All the points are on the line. It's not very steep. All the points are on the line. It's kind of steep. That's what we're saying. Remember our equations of our line, y equals mx plus b. Y is any y value for a point. M, this is super important. M and b are our most important letters. M is my slope of the lines. This is the steepness of our line. A positive slope means a positive correlation, and a negative slope is a negative correlation. So remember, what we are looking at is our change in x over our change in in y. So change in x on top, change of y is on bottom, and if they don't give you a fraction, we're always going to put it over 1. x is going to be the x value of any point, and b is my starting value or my y-intercept of my line. This is the y value when x is 0. This is y when we first start. And you're going to see what, what, what I mean by when we start here in a moment. So if we look at this, let's take a look at our line. So they give us both the scatter plot and they give us our equation, which is nice. So they give us our function y equals 0.92x plus 10, where we are comparing minutes studying to our points on our final exam. So we want to use this line of best fit to estimate the score for someone who studies for 75 minutes. So what they want us to find is our score. Our score is our y value. That's what we are looking for. We are looking for y. What they gave us was minutes. Minutes is our x. We want to find y when we know x. So we know y equals 0.92x which x is 75 minutes. I am all over the place today. I tell you what, uh, plus 10. Boom. So what does this work out to be? Well, we're going to take out our handy-dandy calculator, y equals, and I'm going to plug it in, 0.92 times 75 plus 10. That will give me a 79. So when we study for 75 minutes, our score is 79, is predicted to be a 79. So uh, 75 minutes of studying. Of study, we predict our score will be 
predicted gives a predicted score. Of 79. I'm not guaranteed to get a 79, but that's what my line is predicting. Now, what does that equation tell us? So again, so they're giving us, we're comparing minutes, not hours, that should be minutes studied to our final score of our final exam. So they want us to identify the slope and the y uh, intercept in context to my problem. So slope is this number. Our slope is m. m, remember, is the change in x, change in y. Did I say it wrong on the last one? Oh my gosh, you know what? Let me back it up. I did. I totally lied right here. Slope is change in y over the change in x. So I apologize to that. Go back and change that. I totally messed that up. Fix it, please. So M is delta Y change in Y over the change in X. So what this means is if we have 0.92, there's my change in Y over one, so I can make it a fraction. So we are looking at the change in the score over the change in minutes. So what does this mean? It means my score since it's positive, it's going to increase. So score will increase. The score will increase 0.92% for every extra minute of study. For every added minute of study. Could have probably just typed this. That would have probably been quicker. So my score will increase by 0.92% for every added minute of study. Well, now my next question is explain what the y-intercept is. Now, if you remember from this, I was right on. I don't have to go back and change it. My y-intercept is our starting value when x is zero. So when x equals zero and x is my minutes, y will equal 10 and y is my score. So in context, what this means, zero minutes of study, so zero minutes of study uh, predicts a score of, of 10%. And that's what our line of best fit tells us. So if I apologize for the mistake I made on that slide. I hope you went back and changed it. Please do if you didn't. And if you have any more questions, jot those down. Make sure you ask your teacher when you see them in class. Patriots, hope you have a good one, and we will see you when we see you.